No, I can't do that. Oh my gosh, I got my YouTube channel that's going right now. We're gonna talk later, Mom. Welcome to another edition of the Sultan of Small Talk. This is Chris Carbone, and what we have today in store is a game changer. If you are trying to land the perfect job and don't know how to do that, or if you're trying to get a prospect that's been eluding you and you really wanna grab their attention, we've got an answer to that. Or if you just wanna have some fun, check this out, it's gonna be fun. It was 20 years ago this month that I had decided to leave Florida, where I'm from, to move up to New York City to make it big and pursue my dreams. And all I could tell you is I had this best friend who said, you can stay with me on my couch. If you need three days, take three days. I go, that's all I'm gonna need is three days and I'm gonna have a job and it's gonna be all perfect. Well, three days turned to three weeks, turned to three months. It started to get a little bit scary. In fact, I knew he wanted to kick me off of his couch when I started rearranging the furniture and putting pictures up of my family. Then he said, you're out. So in total, I had about 140 resumes floating around doing a whole lot of nothing. Nobody was calling me back. Nobody was interested in having me come in and interview. And now I guess I had no couch to stay on. So I had to get real inventive. So I called up my mom because that's what I do. I was 21, give me a break. Anyhow, so she said, why don't you come down for a few days and we'll talk about it. So I fly down to Florida and I speak to her best friend who was director of, Kim, of human resources for 10 years. And she says, let's see what you got. Let me see what your resume looks like. So she's pouring through my resume and my cover letter. And she says, it looks pretty good. It should be the kind of thing that we would expect. I mean, you've only had a year of experience, so I'm sure that's not exactly perfect. And then I said to her, I go, well, hasn't anyone ever done anything different? Anything like bold or unusual? Because I can't just be like everyone else. And then she thought for a second and then she pondered thinking about like a memory from a few years ago. And she said, there was this one time, somebody sent me a ransom note. <laughs> what, a ransom note? Is that even possible, I was thinking? At first I thought I didn't hear her right. Just like when I said it to you, you're like, you don't really mean a ransom note because I know what that is, exactly. That's what she said. And I go, explain this thing. So she described it and I thought, this is peculiar, but I'm interested. And so apparently the guy had taken a piece of, you know, construction paper folded over halfway to make like a makeshift card. And it said in letters that we, he cut out of different magazines, I better hear back from you soon or else. And then you open it up or else the kid gets it. And there's just a picture of a goat tied to a tree. So I'm thinking, you can do any of that? That doesn't even make any sense, but I loved it. So I was a creative writer in college. I thought I was gonna be like some amazing writer. It turns out I don't even write grocery lists right now. But what I thought was, if you can do that, you can do anything. And it opened up so many opportunities. Every barricade that I had before where I thought I had to be really stoic and really like professional and buttoned up all the time, that all dissipated and I was like, I can just do whatever and grab attention. So my whole focus at that point was get on a plane, get a job doing whatever it takes. Through trial and error, I've come up with like a perfect plan that should work. I mean, granted, this was some years ago, but I've used it many times to get jobs. And I've also used it to land a lot of clients that would ordinarily just have nothing to do with me. You gotta get real clever and you wanna be really interesting so you can stand apart. So what I have decided was, let's say you're looking for a perfect job. I just want you to give me your top five places where you wanna work. Don't give me 27 places. Five, that's all I think it's gonna take. Put them down, write them on a list, and then get really strategic to find out who is the person you need to talk to at each one of these five uh, companies, what position do you really want, and how do you go after it with laser intensity. And what I want you to do, since you're unemployed right now and you got lots of time, is you make it your job to get a job. So day one, you go ahead and create something really fun, something that they're going to receive in the mail, and Make sure it stands out. I can give you some examples, no problem. So you basically get really crafty. And I mean, use all of your artistic elements that you've ever had from like kindergarten. I mean, not really amazingly crafty. You just get clever. And 
you want to spend some time in Michael's or whatever craft shop you kind of dig. Of course, it's a little trickier to get into Michael's, but you can get this stuff online. And what you want to do is create something very personalized to that person. Could be the director of human resources, or if you've done your research using a little Google, you should go ahead and find out what the name of the person is who's inevitably going to hire you for the position. Then you send something clever again on day two. So Monday is first day. You did something, you put it together, you send it out to all five of your prospects. Then you consider the day done. Next day, Tuesday, you get up and you build something different that you're gonna to put together in a care package or whatever you wanna call this and send that baby out in the mail. Day three, you do your last one because three is all it's gonna take. That's my, that's my interpretation based on what I've done in my past. By the third day, which would be Wednesday, you do something totally different than what you did on, one, on Monday and Tuesday, and then you just let it go. Thursday, you don't do a ding dong thing. And then Friday, all of the mail that you had sent out on Monday and Tuesday and even Wednesday will now have been received and just sit back and expect something magical to happen. What I want you to show them is that if you're this clever and this ambitious now without the job, could you imagine how good you'd be within the job? I like nostalgic things, things that happened back in our youth. I mean, I'm 44 years old, and so there's a lot of people that are in hiring positions that are about my age. And so I like to pull back those ideas that haven't been seen before. Like I remember doing this a long time ago. Remember Blockbuster Video? It looks like I probably never returned this thing. So what I did was I recreated a disc and made it called the ideal candidate. You know, it says, widescreen 2006 inside i created my resume i put it in there just to be a little clever nobody sees this stuff anymore send it to somebody or remember this little doodad all my kids loved it it's been around since like 45 years ago you just pull it around it just wheels along the fisher price has made a bundle on it but what i love is hey reach me on my mobile phone. Remember these things? Everyone's seen these. I decided to get a little clever with stuff that's free. I know before you decide to say, this is never gonna work, I gotta tell you, I got a job paying well over six figures plus commission, sending somebody my resume inside a pinata. Now you basically had to beat apart the pinata, all the candy fell out and a bunch of my crumbled up resumes and they opened it up and called me. It doesn't make sense. So you can definitely use it for sales prospecting. Give you an idea. Somebody I was really eager to get a, me a meeting with in Unilever did not return my phone calls, did not return any of my emails. It went on for like three months. I was a ghost to him. And then I decided to take an old piece of junk, which was an old fax machine that was at my house, and turn that into a prop or a care package and see if that gets his attention. Sure enough, I put the fax machine in front of me. I had a big, large font that I used for top loading the fax machine. And it said, your email inbox is full. So I thought I would send you a fax and I FedExed it to him. Now, the cool thing about FedEx is it tells you with like time dates when it's received. And it was seven minutes later after he received the package and signed for it that he called me. What? Here's one of my favorite things you can get at Michael's. They got tons of these boxes. In fact, whatever theme you're looking for, they probably got it. This is what I use to actually mail out a lot of these packages. And it's really nondescript. They don't know what it is. It's kind of playful. And like this one, I've got some stuff in here, like diapers and this whole baby theme kind of glued in there. So why do I have diapers? Because the message is a simple one. Time for a change? Who doesn't need that? Using eBay, I was able to collect over 30 different air sickness bags. And I put a box together that basically said, sick of interviewing the wrong candidates. So why would you listen to me? Why would you buy into this? Here's what I can tell you. When I did it the old fashioned way, customizing letters, trying to write to everyone by the email inbox that was pretty much the box 
of the black hole, I decided that that really yielded about zero results. In fact, historically, it leads to about 0.05% of the time will it lead to a actual interview. So the, the numbers don't look really good. And I'm all about numbers. What I did instead was doing my methodology where I try to target five companies. At the end of a week, every time I ever did it, I'd get about two of those companies to call me in for an interview. That's 40% return. That's what I'm talking about. And give it a shot and you will also find this will succeed for you. In total, I've probably done 75 or 100 of these different things. And I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but if you subscribed and like, I could probably send you more of these if you dig it. Anyhow, what I wanted to tell you was, you do have a message here. The message is, let's not be like the whole crowd and swim like everyone swims, because that doesn't work, because you won't stand apart. In fact, it was Dr. Seuss who said, what did he say? Why fit in when you were born to stand out? I agree with you, Dr. Seuss. I'm pretty sure he's not even a doctor, but he's a darn good writer and a really good rhyming dude. Uh, what I would suggest to you is try to do something different. Do something bold. Try to use a little humor because everyone likes a little humor. Nostalgic is cool. Using some old things that worked from the past. Go through Walmart. There's plenty of stuff you can use as props. And if you have any questions or you want to do any commenting, do it down below. I'd love to see you at the next session of the Sultan of Small Talk. Daddy, you nailed it.